Hello, thank you for joining me in this short hip opening practice. To begin, let's roll down through our backs onto the mat. Just going to think about lots of space through the spine as we come down so we can support that with the hands holding onto the thighs that your shoulders draw away from the ears to help you really lengthen your spine all the way through to the mat. And then I think it's always worthwhile spending a moment or two to space the spine out, lifting the hips up, lengthening the pelvis away from the weight of the ribs and the shoulders, lifting the ribs up and lengthening the waist out of the weight of the hips. Lovely, letting the ribs settle against the mat, broadening out through the ribs and the shoulders so you can feel the spine in the back of your rib cage connecting with the mat. And then let's support the head from beneath with the hands and lengthening the spine from between the shoulder blades gently through to where it inserts at the base of the head and letting the weight of the head come through to the mat and centre. We're just going to spend three or four breaths here to feel the weight of the body balancing against the mat. So on the exhalations, aiming to feel from the crown of the head through your spine, right the way through to your tailbone, softening and lengthening, allowing the little spinal processes, the little prongs or thorns at the back of the spine to soften downwards, one after another towards your tailbone. And additionally, spending time on the exhalations to think about the shoulders broadening against the mat, widening the weight of the right shoulder and the left shoulder evening against the mat and the weight of the right ribs and the left ribs evening against the mat. Same through the back of the waist, same through the back of the pelvis. We're going to let the thigh bones sink into the hip joints, just softening into the hip joints, using the weight of your legs to support the legs in this position. And then let the arms rest by the sides. And additionally, now thinking about bringing some awareness to the inhalations. As you're breathing in, feeling the coolness of the breath meet the skin in the nostrils. Feeling the coolness of the breath arrive on the skin at the back of the throat, back of the mouth. And visualising the breath then just diving down over the front of the spine all the way through to the tailbone. And then with your exhalations again, this idea of letting the breath sweep down through the back of the body, softening and lengthening the spine and balancing out the weight of the ribs and the shoulders against the mouth. So we're going to follow the breath once more in this way, very consciously allowing the breath to take effect within the body, the relationship between the breath and the body, just feeling that healing. And that will help us as we move into the actual practice itself. So let's open the arms out in line with the shoulder joints. The arms can be long to both sides, or if it's easier for you, you can bring the hands into the back of the head and just stretching into your elbows. So both are fine, it's just a question often of space. And let's, from this position, as we breathe out, keep that sense of length and softness through the back of the spine. Let your lower abdominal muscles engage and draw down the back and the navel pull to the spine and gently releasing the spine into a twist. Let's say we're going towards our right side. And as we work into the twist, Coming through gently, if we force the twist and really push and pull with the legs, we often lose this lengthening and opening through the flank, through the outside of the rib cage, waist, hip into the thigh. And ideally, in this uh, little twist, the spine will be long, the waist will stay nice and long, and we should, should still be able to feel that sense of lengthening crown to tailbone, rather than that there's a push forward or an arch uh, in and around the base of the rib cage, especially. Now again, once we're in the twist, if we let the weight of our legs relax, relaxing through the inside thigh and the outside thigh, we'll feel how that helps the twist to open the body a little bit more. Still keeping lots of awareness with our inhalations as well, allowing there to be space in the body on the inhalations, thinking about the breath diving down over the front of the spine, opening space over the front of the spine. And then again, as you breathe out the back of the spine, softening and just allowing the shoulders, the ribs, the waist, the hips to be nice and broad and wide. So gently, gradually, as you're ready, you're going to wheel back towards the centre. We can depress the breastbone towards the spine, draw the navel towards the spine, hollow in the lower abdomen. So we really lead back from the spine more than that we pull back using the legs. 
And then once again, it's really deep. Let's exhale to release the tailbone and then the sacrum and then the waist over towards the left side here. And again, as we're coming through, just aiming to keep the breastbone lengthening away from the face, breastbone depressed towards the spine. And trying to feel this strong opening through the side of the body. So, so what I'm saying is if we pause and push like that, I actually think that there's a lot less opening to be had. Just to allow the muscles to connect one into the other over your bone structure. And that will usually be a very good practice. So again, breathing, lots of awareness of the breath interacting with the spine. And using the breath as well to keep the body, the trunk of the body open, the ribs opening away from the spine, the ribs opening away from the breastbone, the hips opening away from the spine. Just checking in that the legs are relaxed. If you can feel the weight of the legs opening the outsides of the hips. And let's breathe one more round of the breath here. And then once again, as you're ready, coming through on your exhalation, depressing the breastbone towards the spine, navel pulls the spine, hollowing in the lower abdomen, just wheeling the spine back with as little effort from the legs as possible. So you keep that opening and lengthening and mobilization through the spine going. Now let's from here, let the legs move out towards the sides. And with this, many of us are not super flexible. Some of us are, but many of us aren't. And what I find is very helpful is to think about just widening the space between the crests of my hip bones, lifting the thighs up and out a little bit of the hip joints to create space within the hip joints, and then letting the inner thighs open from the hip joint towards the knee. So just going through like that. So for some people, this is a very open position. For others like me, it's just not so open. And it, it doesn't matter. It's we're opening our own bodies as much as our own bodies will open. Now there, I've just lengthened my spine out. I've lifted the ribs away from the mat and stretched the small of the back edge of the hips and then resettled the ribs to the mat. And then again, supporting the head with the hands, lengthening from between the shoulder blades, resettling the head to the mat. And it may be comfortable here to let the arms flow up and back. If the arms move back gently, we'll be able to feel how the action of the arms moving back opens the muscles in the sides of our rib cage. And once again, as the arms are above and behind the head, just softening between the shoulder blades and the rib cage. Thinking about relaxing through the back of the spine as much as is possible in this little passive back bend where we are. Again, just seeing if it's possible to feel the energy passing over the front of the spine. The, the breath can't pull as much back into the body on in a back bend as in other positions. But just seeing if you can feel the sense of the energy flowing near or near the front of the spine. And again, on the exhalations, just as much as you can, relaxing the back of the spine in this position, checking that you're even through the shoulders, right side, left side, even weight on the mat, pelvis, right side, left side, even weight on the mat, as much as possible. Just the last couple of breaths here in the Supta Baddha Kanasana. And then again gently and slowly with an exhalation coming back. So as I come back, I tend to depress my breastbone to the spine, draw my navel to the spine, hollow in the lower abdomen. So my legs come back with as little work as possible. And that means when I arrive back in the parallel leg position, that my hip joints are nice and relaxed. Um, I've maintained that opening that I just aimed to put into my body in the last posture. And then from here, let's bring the right leg up. And we're just going to place the right uh, shin just above the ankle bone onto the top of the um, left thigh. And ideally, your ankle bone is just to the outside of your left thigh. Now, if it's not possible, if it's too much on the knee or too much on the hip, let the leg open away. But the aim would be gradually to get the position quite tight. Knee as close to in line with your pelvis as possible. 
But again, you shouldn't force it, the knee shouldn't be twisted, the knee shouldn't be painful. So here again, I'm just going to open up the leg through my spine, lifting the ribs, lifting the head, and then keeping the lower abdomen engaged and the navel pulling to the spine, I'm going to let the weight of my legs come up and towards me, reach through to the um, back of this leg. Now, if it's not possible to reach through to the back of the leg, perhaps I should have thought of this before, then you can always use a strap or a resistance band to help draw the leg in and towards you. So you just pass that resistance band underneath your left leg on the side and use that to come up a little bit. Sometimes for people, even that's not possible, in which case you could put a block or two blocks underneath the left foot and that will intensify the position from the original position. Just checking wherever you are in the Susi Sarandesana, the keyhole, that the back of the neck stays long. Coming back again to our breathing over the front of the spine, right the way through to the tailbone. And as you breathe out, relaxing through the back of the spine, broadening the weight of the shoulders, ribs, waist, hips against the mat. Just seeing if the trunk can be as even as possible in terms of its weight against the mat. Keeping your breath flowing. Just try to soften and relax from the inside of the throat as you're breathing. So then, as you're ready, we can either maintain the uh, keyhole position or we can let the left leg release to the floor and aiming to keep the tailbone in contact with the mat a little bit. We're going to think about drawing this right leg forwards and along the front of the body. Now the aim here is to think about the heel traveling as if it's going to arrive behind the crown of the head. Now that may very well not happen today. I don't think it will happen in my practice today. <laughs> but um, that's the direction. So we, the, the idea is not necessary to get the heel behind the foot, the head, the heel behind the head, but to feel that channel, that line of muscles in the body opening rather than a different line. So if the leg veers off to the side, or if we're not able to keep the inside of the leg towards the front of the body, we keep opening a different area. So we're moving towards Bhairavasana here, the sleeping yogi. And we feel the intensity of the opening in the outside of the hip. But if we think in terms of releasing through the inside of the hip, inside thigh to the knee, that will also be quite helpful. And I also aim to keep my tailbone rolled into the mat. So in a way, I'm just being truthful about how open I am. If I let my hips roll off the mat, of course my foot comes further forwards. <laughs> but um, it's not really opening the muscles, it's just lifting my hips off the floor, <laughs> which is a different practice. So then as we're ready again, we're just going to return that foot, if we raised it at all, to the left leg. And from here, as you're ready, we're going to roll ourselves up to seated. So keyhole in seated and just opening again that right knee away from us, keeping it as wide as possible. And breathing, you need to let your spine lift quite tall. So for some people, it won't be possible to be here with a tall spine unless they take a little bit of support beneath the sitting bones. You might be able to see it's easier for me with the, the block underneath the hips, it definitely is. Um, or the position may just be too strong anyway, in which case let that lower leg extend and just hugging your thigh towards you. Now if we're still in the seated keyhole, we're going to just allow our left leg to tuck under and really holding the right hip down, hugging that right thigh towards the front of the body keeping the collarbones nice and broad and open, letting the shoulder blades move down the back. Again, aiming to feel the lift right from the base of the spine into the crown. Let the vertebrae in the neck lengthen out of the vertebrae in the ribcage. Breastbone can depress towards the spine. And you might here just think about a gentle twist. So again, leading from the spine, but this time leading through the upper spine and allowing the vertebrae of the neck to still continue to lengthen out of the vertebrae in the ribcage. Breathing. And as you're ready again, 
on an exhalation, arm twisting. Let's have a go at that on the other side as well. So we just uncross our leg from wherever we are. And once again, roll down through the spine so we can support shoulders drawing away from the ears, rolling all the way through to the mat. Again, spending a moment to relax through the length of the spine, to coordinate through the, the shoulders and the ribs and the waist and the hips, to bring this time the left leg to cross over the right leg. We're a little bit further away from the um, butterfly position that we were in before on the mat where we were opening the depth of the hip joint. So spending a moment here again to relax deep into the hip joint. Letting the weight of the pelvis be as even as you can against the mat and broadening out through the waist and the ribs and the shoulders. And then once again, as you're ready, lower abdomen and midsection drawing down and back. And we're going to let the weight of the legs come towards us. So here, ideally, I aim to keep my tailbone rolled into the mat. I aim to keep my left knee quite wide. And I aim to have a bit more weight going through my right hip than my left hip when my left leg is raised. And then I will feel the intensity of the opening more. But as I say, we, we aim not to compromise the knee joint or the ankle joint. And if it feels much better to you, use a yoga strap or scarf or a tie, whatever you have handy. In my case, a resistance band to just support from beneath your, your right leg like that and just keeping the breastbone lengthening away. Thinking about again your breath, the breath diving down over the front of your spine, opening right the way through to the tailbone and as you breathe out relaxing the back of the spine, broadening and opening the shoulders, ribs, waist, hips against the mat as well. So once again, last breath or so here, so you see Sarandesana. And then either staying in the Susya Sarandasana or moving into the Bhairavasana, the sleeping yogi. So that's just where we're letting the, the hand come, the elbow come underneath the knee and the hand come around to the outside of our left ankle, aiming to keep the tailbone rolling into the mat. And I'm talking a lot now because of course I'm, I'm teaching and demonstrating, but if I were in my own practice, I would breathe in, open up over the front of the spine like this. That releases a little bit of space into my hip joint, especially when I visualize my breath coming right down over the front of my spine to my tailbone. So I let the thigh bone float up a little bit in my hip joint. And as I breathe out again, I'm going to relax my spine and broaden shoulders, ribs, waist, hips against the mat. And that will release the leg towards me a bit. So as soon as I start breathing and creating space within my body with my breath and directing that space as the, as the breath in my mind's eye reaches my tailbone, I can also direct it a little into my hip joint. That will help me to find space and then breathing out, just relaxing the back of the spine, broadening the body into the mouth. So that was Bhairavasana. And then let's just bring that leg through again and opening the knee to the side. So, so now from here on this first side, we rolled up through the spine so that we arrived in the seated keyhole and just still thinking about this knee moving out to the side. And if we need to, we're sitting up on the block and or if it's just not working at all, we're letting the right leg extend and then just the left leg is crossed over the right leg like that. So, so then we're hugging, we're still at the stage where we're hugging the leg towards us. And if we were in the full Susya Sarandasana here, and we stayed there, we tuck the right leg under, and then we're just hugging, say so just hugging, it's quite intense really, hugging this left leg towards us. Now what will tend to happen is hip lifts up, but again, the aim is to keep that hip down so that the muscles that pass between the sitting bone into the thigh are actually opened. If we let the hip lift up, we're not really opening those connections bone to bone, muscle to muscle through the body. Now we're in quite a square position at the moment. And we might again just be thinking about the effect of the breath.
breath over our spine. Breathing in, opening and releasing the front of the spine. Breathing out, relaxing through the back of the spine, broadening shoulders, ribs, waist, hips. And then eventually, with the sense that I talked about before of the vertebrae in the neck, continuing to lengthen out of the vertebrae in the rib cage, coming into a twist here, keeping the crown of your head directed towards the ceiling, opening across the collarbone. So again, avoiding wrenching the spine. Feel that your spine can still respond to your breath, that you feel on the inhalations, the spaces between the vertebrae in your neck and through your thoracic spine in the rib cage. And as you breathe out again, that the spine can actively open upwards into the crown of the head. So now then, once again, as we're ready, let's with an exhalation untwist. And we're better to close, release the base of our spine and make sure that it's uh, long and neutralized again. So let's just extend forward. We let the soles of the feet come together, relaxing through the depth of the insides of the hip joints and side thighs. And as well, I will just actively think in terms of broadening my pelvis out away from my sacrum and tailbone to begin with. And then hinging forward a little and the shoulders drawing away from my ears and shoulder blades gliding down my back as much as possible. Just breathing here once more, breath, diving down over the front of the spine, opening space back towards my tailbone. And as I breathe out, letting the back of my spine soften and broaden out shoulders, ribs, waist, hips. Good. Once again, as you're ready on an inhalation, drawing up. Let's rotate the arms behind us, keep the navel pulling to the spine, hooking up towards the diaphragm if possible, lifting up and out of the shoulders, spine opening up and out of the rib cage, small of the back staying tall, weight squarely on the sitting bones. Good. And then just releasing that little back. And that brings us really to the close of this short hip opening practice. Let's spend a moment to center and to connect the awareness with the body here at the close of the practice. I'm just doing this in the seated mountain Pavatasana, breathing in to let the arms flow up, to open the muscles in the waist and in the ribs, feel our spine lengthening and breathing out to flow the arms back down again, keeping our spine nice and tall. So inhalation broad and wide into the depth of the chest. Feeling the front of the spine opening. And once again, as you're ready, keeping the spine lifted from the, cr the, cr the tailbone to the crown, but relaxing the back of the spine. Well, let's just flow through four more breaths. Letting the hands rest for a moment on the knees. Just again, allowing the breath to play over the front of the spine on the inhalations, feeling that the back of the spine can soften on the exhalations. Acknowledging any sense of oneness, a sense of ease or openness that there may be within the body within the mind and through the being at present. And again, as you're ready, thinking about opening up your eyes, reconnecting with the physical surroundings about you. 
Om Shanti Namaste. Thank you for watching. Thank you for spending this time with me. I hope that you've enjoyed this short hip opening practice. If you'd like to watch more of my videos on a regular basis, please think about subscribing to my channel.